So what's up, people? And welcome to the Chapter Seventy Nine discussion of Kaiju Hachiko or Kaiju Number Eight. So Chapter Seventy Nine came out about ten days ago, and as always, I will leave a link to this chapter that's currently being shown on the publisher's official website, Manga Plus, for free to the North American audience. So if you're interested, yeah, go take a look at it before they pull this chapter back. Now, Chapter Seventy Nine, if you recall, Chapter Seventy Eight. Was a very intense chapter because we saw Monster Number Fifteen overwhelm Kikoru Shinomiya during their battle. She was getting her butt kicked in, and the whole chapter revolved around that battle and the ferocity and intensity that Monster Number Fifteen was putting against Kikoru. And one of the things I discussed during that chapter discussion was that. It will be interesting to see how she gets out of this because if she's so overwhelmed, it makes it very difficult to find a way to get her out of this situation unless you create a Deus Ex Machina sort of situation where all of a sudden something just out of the blue solves the problem. And what we find out in Chapter Seventy Nine is, yeah, more or less this happened. It's not easy to find any other way of getting her out of this sort of situation, and the difficulty that you have with Deus Ex Machina sort of situations is because it comes out of the blue. It makes the reader wonder, okay, here's another solution that the author pulled out of their you know where to get the character out of a problem. But with these sorts of situations, much of the writing depends upon what I call the rule of cool. If the solution that is pulled out is relatively cringeworthy, not particularly creative, or just downright outrageous, then it makes the story feel less interesting because there's little depth to the solution that is created. However, if there is something that makes the solution, despite it being sudden, to be quite interesting and very cool in content. Then, despite its sudden situation, it makes it look better. Now, this depends upon who is reading. Some people just don't like sudden solutions because it feels like it's lazy writing. I myself tend to like it if the situation, once again, follows the rule of cool. And in this situation, I didn't mind the solution at all. It's one that actually Matsumoto Naoya has been setting up for quite some time. We know that the battle suit that Kikoru Shinomiya is wearing is her mother's, so there was always that situation that there would be something that would be something like a passing of the torch to the next generation, and that's what you see here. And so, coming out of Chapter Seventy-Eight, in Chapter Seventy-Nine, we see Kikoru continuing to be pressured, and if you recall, at the end of Chapter Seventy-Eight. Monster Number Fifteen powered herself up to become even more difficult an opponent for Kikoru, and we see in Chapter Seventy Nine her attack after she powered up, and yeah, it's become even more intense than what we saw in the previous chapter. And despite all the effort that Kikoru does, she gets overwhelmed. Now, one thing that is lucky is the power that she gets from her battle suit is speed. The special power of Monster Number Four was supersonic speed, and because of that, at least she has some chance of dodging the attacks by Monster Number Fifteen. But what we find out is, once she's powered up, despite all the efforts that Kikoru does, Monster Number Fifteen is found to be able to stay up with Kikoru relatively easily, and because of that, as she continues her barrage. There is nothing Kikoru really can do to defend herself against it, and she gets pummeled down by the attacks. And what we find out from headquarters, who is keeping track of Kikoru and her condition, the data that's coming back from the power suit indicates that Kikoru is taking some serious internal damage. And so this creates an even more tense situation than what we had before. And as much as headquarters is trying to send commands to defend and protect Kikoru, they can't stay up with the tremendous barrage that Monster Number Fifteen is bringing in. So Kikoru is getting destroyed slowly. 
And it's at a point where headquarters is finally thinking that they should just lower their shields and send out reinforcements to save Kikoru. But it's at that time that Kikoru stops them because she realizes that that's exactly what monster number nine wants. Why did monster number nine separate each one of these special soldiers and then send really powerful monsters out there? Well, one is of course to destroy each one of these special soldiers, but the other is if headquarters has to watch each one of these soldiers slowly get killed, eventually it will have to lower its defenses to send out reinforcements. And that is what Kikoru realizes, and that is what Kikoru tells headquarters, that the moment headquarters lowers their defenses, monster number nine will go on the attack. And so Kikoru mentions that she will get out of this, and she will do what she can to survive. Now, headquarters is wondering, how the heck is that going to happen? And Kikoru answers back that, well, she's almost there. To which headquarters, of course, wonders what the heck is she talking about? What does it mean Kikoru is almost there? And that is when finally headquarters realizes that she may be experiencing her mother's ghost. Now this gets explained in this chapter. It turns out that because there is such a close fusion between the operator and the special battle suit, that the memory of the previous operator gets fused into the battle suit. And if there is a successful fusion by the next operator, the operator often sees an image of the previous operator when he or she is fused into that battle suit. And so what Kikoru finds out is she's seeing images of her mother as she would have fought monster number 15. And because she is such an outstanding soldier, it's giving Kikoru the ability to figure out what she should be doing. This is somewhat similar to, of course, the power that monster number one gave to Nurumi, which is the images of what the monster will do a few seconds later, a precog sort of capability. But in this case, because the suit is giving the visualization of what a really professional soldier would have done like Hikari, it's giving Kikoru the ability to try to catch up to her mom. And what headquarters is noticing is that her fusion and efficiency with the battle suit is slowly going up. And so this is one of those, yes, Nakama power and a special power that suddenly appears. But it's done quite well because you know that there always had to be some sort of connection between mother and daughter. Considering the fact that there was so much drama of the daughter feeling like she was the reason her mom died. And there was always that tremendous effort that Kikoru did to try to catch up to her mom so that she would feel that she was worthy of her parents. And so as much as this is a deus ex machina sort of situation, as much as this might be a Nakama power where the Nakama is actually mother and daughter, it's pretty well done because it was something that Matsumoto Naoya has been setting up for quite a while. It would have been cringeworthy if there was no setup and now all of a sudden just out of the blue Nakama power gets Kikoru out of the situation. But because Matsumoto Naoya set up this drama, set up this history, it really does make sense to see this solution come out. And so at the end of the chapter, we notice that Kikoru is getting better and better. And finally, at some point, she is able to strike monster number 15. And we actually see the images of what she is seeing versus what she is doing. And we see that she is catching up to her mother's image. And the final part, she says, she will catch up to her mom, not tomorrow, not the next day, but now, because now is when she needs to do so. And so this was a very interesting chapter. Yes, it was a very sudden solution, but it was a sudden solution that was set up for quite a long time. 
And it really gave a very emotional connection to the solution that was brought out. So I thought that it was quite well done. I could understand some people feeling disappointed because it may be out of the blue. But I don't mind that if it is, again, well set up. And I thought this was set up quite well. And so it will be interesting to see what happens in the next chapter because by that time, I would expect Hikoru to potentially catch up to her mom and possibly surpass her. And if that happens, how will she fare against monster number 15? And if she beats monster number 15, how will that reflect to the other battles that are going on all over Japan? So it'll be interesting to see. This seems to be the very beginning, the vanguard of the battles. And so the result of this battle will seriously set the tone for the rest of the story. Now what's interesting is many of the people who read this chapter mentioned that if this was an image that Kikoru saw of the previous owner, then is that what happened to Kafka during his training? If you recall during his training, he saw an image of a samurai at the temple where he was working out. And he didn't know what that was, and we didn't know what that was either. But if Kikoru is seeing her mother's ghost, which was the previous user of the battle suit, then is monster number eight projecting an image of the previous host. Now this will all depend because there is no indication that Kafka's hosting capability will have the same effect as Kikoru's battle suit capability, right? Monster number eight is not a suit, it really is a host. And we do not know whether that small monster that entered Kafka had a previous host. But it's not out of the question. And it will be interesting. And if that turns out to be the case, then there's probably an indication that Kafka will also find a way of using that previous ghost to make himself stronger. And so that will also be interesting to see in the future. But in any case, this has set up another interesting avenue for the story, and it will be interesting to see how Matsumoto Naoya moves this along. And once the next chapter comes out, I'll bring out another video. I hope you join me at that time. But this is the chapter 79 discussion for Monster Number 8 or Kaiju Number 8. If you read it, what you think about it, any comments will be greatly appreciated. And until the next episode, happy manga reading, and as always, giant nice day, everyone.